All right. So, Casey here with the West Texas Recruiters Guide. Um, on the call today, we've got Gatlin Cooper, D1 college athlete for the Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks. What's up, Gatlin? What's up? So, you know, full disclosure, Gatlin is my son. He's kind of part of the reason that the West Texas Recruiters Guide is around. Um, so what we're going to do is our goal is to help, you know, uh, help players get get promoted, you know, help them get views, help them get likes, help them get, you know, get on the radars of some of these college college coaches and college teams. Um, so that's what we're trying to do, right? You know, I know a little bit about marketing and, and sales, and Gatlin was really good at, you know, putting out videos and, and keeping his Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff popping off with the right kind of content and everything. Um, and I'm sure that helped a lot. So, so the main goal is just, you know, let you tell your story, how you got to be where you're at, which is a division one college football player. So got one. Thanks for coming on. So let's start off, you know, first off, let's, let's kind of fill everybody in on your credentials, right? So 2020 state champion, um, a two time all state offensive lineman, multiple all districts, offensive linemen, offensive uh, linemen of the year for the district in 2020, or was that 2021? Uh, 2021. 2021, um, some defensive all districts, some all big countries, so a lot of credentials. I see I see the, the wall of Gatlin behind you. So let me ask you this, you know, being a – how does it feel – to be a state champion? I mean, do you feel like that brings any kind of recognition or do people ask you about it? You know, you're two years removed now. How, how does it, how does that feel? Uh, it feels pretty cool. I, you definitely get noticed in the community and they know that you are part of that team that did that because at our school, it hasn't ever been done before. So yeah, they, it's definitely, especially since we're a smaller community, it's definitely realized a lot. Outside of that, unless you're really talking to someone about where you came from, what team you were on, it doesn't get really recognized. When you do bring it up, though, saying, hey, now we won state in 2020, it's a, you, get, you get congratulated because it's a pretty big accomplishment, especially in Texas. For sure. So let me ask you this. That, you know, that's, I watch a lot of high school football, and I've seen a lot of state championship games, and that's one of – you know, to be a part of it is, is you know, a, a person in the stands and having a, a kid on the field playing. That's one of the most exciting games I've watched. So what was it like? You guys were down at half. What was it like being down at half? Really the first time you've been down all season, except for the first game when you lost. Um, well, what was that like? What were the the feelings? What were what were people saying in the locker room? What got y'all fired up to come back out in the second half and do what you guys did? <laughs> Well, we were down by 21, which is a big number to be down by. But um, really, the locker room, we were just – we weren't even – we weren't even really that hyped. We were just like, guys, we've we've come so far. Like, we can't, we can't lose this game. We've already beat them once earlier in the season. It's hard to beat people twice. But, uh, yeah, we were just like, we've come too far just to lose, like – Come on now, like it, it's we're beating ourselves right now. It's the mistakes that we're making, not anything that they're doing. Um, and really, if you ask anyone what what saved us at halftime, we all took honey shots. Like we had we had little syringes full of honey, and we all took them. And that's what we say won us the game. Honey shots, nice. Okay, good. All right. Well, so let's let's back up a little bit. So leading up to the state game, becoming a D1 athlete, you know, how did how did it get there? What kind of role has football played in your life? What kind of, you know, when did it start for you? What age? Um, honestly, I've been playing football ever since you could play football. Um, I played seventh and eighth grade year. I went to Wiley Junior High. It was rough. I was I was out of shape. I wasn't the best I could be. And I just I didn't like it there. Wasn't wasn't a fan of it. And so I moved out to June Ed my freshman year. 
uh, realized I, I wanted to be good. And I really started off uh, freshman year just going from knowing what I needed to do and being a new kid on the block and going from playing the first three games, first four games on the freshman team, then getting recognized a little bit more and getting moved up to the JV team as a freshman. I'm um, playing with some of my buddies. Took I started took a starting spot on the JV team freshman year. And, and yeah, and so that happened. We go into sophomore year, and I end up earning a starting spot on varsity with a lot of good people around me. And that's – if you ask anyone, that's the year that they thought we were going to go to state uh, was my sophomore year. We had a lot of big-time guys like uh, the Twins, Reese and Rylan Hayes and Kate Kimmel and a lot of people like that. But we just – we didn't have the team chemistry that we did the year after. And so I think that's the reason really why what happened to go to state happened because the team chemistry that we had uh, was was crazy. So yeah, yeah, the, the the chemistry you guys had on that junior team, your your junior year was it was it was exceptional. There there was a bond there. I, I don't know what it was or how it happened, but after that first game, y'all definitely had something going. So so let's go back. You said you know your your ju- in junior high, seventh and eighth grade, you were at Wiley. Now before that, you know you were always a starter. Of course, you know, I coached as you were growing up and you were always a good player, always one of the bigger kids. In junior high, you were still one of the bigger kids, but something was just missing. You know, it wasn't – part of it was you probably weren't getting the shot that you needed and then something else was off. I don't know if it was your conditioning or your mindset or what, but I'll agree. It was, it was a rough two years. Yeah, I saw everyone else getting uh... – like my cousin, he was on the team. Everyone just started getting a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, a little bit faster. And I was just a little slower to develop it. And so it just put me down and I just wasn't really feeling it like I was. And then started to get stronger, started to get faster. So coming into your freshman year, you know, you were still a pretty big kid. But but at this point, you know, you you've pretty much been – you know, height wise about the same since going into your freshman year for the most part. You've grown a little bit. You're right at six foot now. Yeah. What you know, what what kind of shift is that going from being one of the biggest, most athletic kids on the field to like now everybody's catching up with you? What mindset shift did you have to to have in, in order to take it to the next level and, and and go from, you know, you were starting at Wiley on the offensive line, but you ended up your freshman year being like, I, I believe you were like the defensive end or defensive tackle on JV starting. Yeah. Um, really just, I had to be the baddest dude out there. Um, I knew I wasn't going to be the biggest, probably wasn't going to be the strongest and definitely wasn't going to be the fastest. So I just know I had to be the baddest. And I came with really just playing with reckless abandon, just going head first, hitting, doing whatever I could to get noticed. So you you get on so you get on your sophomore year, you guys go two rounds in the playoffs, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Uh or did we just go one year that year? Yeah, sophomore we won, year. Lost the pilot point very first round. Okay. So one and done basically. Then at the end of sophomore year, the world comes to to a close and school shut down basically in March and we don't know what's going to happen. So leading up to that, you kicked off a little campaign and and we're trying to get some signatures to have football go on, you know, make sure that we could continue to play, which was a really cool thing to do. You guys lost your very first game of your junior year. Well, yeah, what we- do you think? What do you think? What do you think happened there? Knowing the players that we have on that team, you got X starting at running back. We got Tate Yardley, amazing quarterback. We got uh, Henderson. We had Lewis. We had um, uh, the, the the kid that played the defensive back. He had the interception in the Mount Vernon game. Oh, Caden. Uh, uh, Caden. Caden. Oh, yeah. We had Sands, but no, it was, he's got a little brother on Maddox's team. Yeah, I know. His name's Caden. What's his last name? Trying oh, to give that uh, brother a shout out. Ed Martin. Martin, yes. Beast. Beastly. Dil- uh, you know, we had uh 
Megatron, of course. So, so we had a lot of good dudes, but we lost the very first game to um, Ballinger. We were just cocky. That's all it was. We thought it's going to be easy. It's going to be a bloodbath. We don't really need to try. And they came out and hit us in the mouth, and we weren't ready. We we thought it, we had an easy win, and that's I'm I'm actually really thankful we lost that game because that that game put us in the mindset that we had to be we had to get we had to have a setback. It kicked the fire back under us. It made us want to play the game more. It made us it just it kicked us off. It it irritated the coaches a little bit, so they were a little harder on us, pushed us a little harder. And so, it, I think got us prepared for the rest of the season. So, at that point, we went on a run. We had a team bell out, and I believe it was game. It was uh, Sweetwater. Sweetwater, but, yeah, and then we played Howitzville, what, game four, game five, something like that? I think it's game five, yeah. Yeah, so we went down and we played Howitzville, and we ended up beating them, and that's kind of when I knew and I think a lot of people knew like okay we could be for real because they were already ranked at that point we go yeah, on to finish we only lost the one game now I personally couldn't wait to play Brock everybody was you know you know how everybody is with Brock it's, they're a good team they got a history of being good and good good players I'm not doubting that we know that they're good but I think I think we you know just kind of felt like it was going to be the year that we could beat Brock. What was it like going in, you know, after after struggling against Paradise in the first round of the playoffs and then meeting up with the almighty Brock in round three? Let, you know, kind of kind of explain what it was like going into that game, how that game unfolded. You, you had a big play along with Megatron off of a punt from uh, Palmer. You know, it, it, walk me through that game because that's one of the biggest wins other than state in gym net history. Uh, so Brock was ranked number one. They had they had a few they they had a few Division one prospects. Their safety had an offer from Kentucky, I believe. Their running back is at Georgia. Just got a ring, a national championship ring with them. Uh, they they had a bunch of big guys. They had a big offensive line, and really the whole week we were like, you know what? Like, shoot, we made it this far. If we win, we win. Like that's that's the goal is to win. We know they're a good team. If we don't, you know, we lost to the number one team in state. Like that will obviously win. Like we knew they were good. We knew they were the number one team in state. So we were like, yeah, if we beat them, we beat them. But and that's our that's our goal. But you know, we understand how good they are. And so the whole week we were just like in that that mindset. Like you know, we really have a shot to go beat them. So I mean, we're gonna push our hardest, and we go out there and. We we get a stop, we just get hype, and it was it was an extremely packed game. We played at Tarleton, uh, in Stephenville, and we get a stop, and some things happen, and then it re what really changed it was we had, I don't remember if it was the safety that came first or the punt return that came first. It was but, the it was the safety, and then Henderson got the punt return. Okay, yeah, uh, Palmer, our punter, he punted it all the way down to I want to say the two yard line the one or two yard line, an amazing punt. We have them held right there. And I think it's the second play they threw, they threw an incomplete pass or something. And then it's the second play I get straight through and they try to hand it off. I get straight through and I, uh, I grab onto Cass Jones and I, I hold him just long enough before he escapes to have my teammate Austin Martin from the edge come rush in and get the, get the full safety. And so, Right there, that was really a huge momentum shift. And I think, I want to say two or three drives later, um, our, our returner, Zach Henderson, he returns a punt return for a touchdown. And that's that's when everything started going, started shifting our way. And we, from there, we just had momentum the whole game. So going into that game, did you do any – because there's a, there's a picture of you, and it may be behind you somewhere, but coming out of that tunnel, you know, coming out of the locker room, going to the tunnel – I'm usually on down there with, with the, the blow up. You know, you had a little bit different look in that game. You were a little bit quieter leading up to it, not, you know, you know, during that whole playoff run, really. What, what do you, what was your mindset? What kind of mindset do you have to have to go win a state championship, to play six more games? 
and win a state championship? What was your mindset like X, some of these other guys that were, you know, out there with you just doing work? What what was going on in y'all's heads? That's a lot of pressure. It's just you just gotta have a sharpshooter mindset. You just gotta be dialed in and focused while you still gotta have fun at the same time. Like you gotta understand like like it is still a game. You still gotta have fun, but you gotta realize like this is a big moment. This is something you can really you're really not only not only for like for some teams like Allen and Alito and them, like you gotta be focused, but at the same time you're not really you're making history, but you're not. They go to state every year. They go four or five rounds every year. It's not new to them. For us, we haven't been to state since Colt McCoy in 2003, something like that. Four, something like that. 2003, 2004, and even then we didn't win state. And we, I don't think we've ever went past three rounds since then. So for for that, you knew you were making history. You had You had the entire community coming up to show you. Uh, to watch you play and so you knew that you had to be locked in and and bring a different mindset to the game than you would a, a regular season game so then y'all got y'all beat them in a close game they end up coming back and, and it ends up being a close game we win with a field goal then going into pilot point you know you, you had a pretty so so you played both ways you were a two-way starter as a big guy you were actually you know you're like 300 something pounds now at that point you were actually only about probably 240 you know, if I had to guess during that was, playoff run. I was, I was 225 after the state game. So, yeah, you 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 know, lost a lot of weight being down there in the trenches, taking on double teams because you were playing both ways. In that pilot point game, you had a big defensive game. A lot of defensive plays. You were all over the field from the nose guard. You know, we, you were taking on double teams most, most of the year. We go on to kill pilot point. It wasn't a contest. X went off. You know, just he he was all over the place. Our offense, everything was just going right. Then we we hit Mount Vernon. What was that game like? Because you're playing Mount Vernon, Art Browse, you know, they got a good team. They play two-way, you know, they got two-way players. So they're getting rest and y'all aren't. How exhausted was it to play in that game and come away with that win? Um yeah, yeah that game was pretty rough. We knew they had Art Browse, who is a an amazing coach, uh, got a lot of tricks up his sleeve, and yeah, they were they were all one way guys. So they had they had their offense, they had their offense. They'd come out, and then they had a defense that would come out. They didn't have guys who were going back and forth who would just turn around every drive like we did. So uh, yeah, you'll see a lot of us. I think me, Austin Martin, you'll see Dub Harwell just throwing up on the field as we run off to the sideline, just throwing up as we're running knowing how much energy it takes just to play that game. That game was extremely – that tested our – that tested our um, our mental strength and physical physical conditioning extremely. But I don't know. We really, really – that game was – it was tiring, but it wasn't at the same time. You knew you were tired, but you were so focused on getting a win that um, it didn't really hit you. You had a ton of adrenaline going, so – um, it wasn't bad. Obviously, their offensive line will come back on the field a few times, fully rested. So there were some reps that you were going to lose. It's just about how it's about how you replayed the next rep, how you went up the next play. Like, okay, yeah, I might have got beat that play. What am I going to do the next play? Am I going to get beat again because I'm tired, or am I going to go ahead and push through it? And, and yeah, and you know, we had a pretty healthy season, so so that helped that as well. Like yeah. we didn't really have any injuries that I could think of. I mean. You know, you uh, other than the pilot point game, whenever you – whatever happened, happened. I, I, I don't know if you were unconscious or not, but you took the cheap shot. You were down. They go to commercial break, you know, and you, you come off the field, you end up going back in the game. But no injuries that year. Um, you know, obviously we go on to win state, come back win. It, at what point – let me ask you this. At what point did you think or did you know that you would be able to play college football? Like, hey, I got a chance. I think I'm good enough. Uh, probably freshman year. I mean, I always knew. I I knew from the jump freshman year. Like, I didn't know what level of college football. Obviously, the dream was always D one, but I always knew that no matter what, I was gonna be able to play college football, and that's what I always said. And as long as I say it, I know I can do it. So, so. 
I, I would agree. I think around freshman year, I even remember talking to one of the coaches and asking them, like, hey, do you think Gatlin's got a shot um, at playing college football? And they were like, yeah, for sure. Now, obviously, you've known this. Everybody knows it. <laughs> that's been talking to you recruiting wise, you're only six foot. So for a, an offensive lineman, even a defensive lineman, that's pretty short, you know, especially for a D one. I mean, you got a big wide frame, you're a big, strong kid, you're quick for a big guy, but you've got that height disadvantage coming in at only six foot. Does that, you know, does that push you or does it, does it irritate you knowing that, Hey, there's a lot of guys out there that are six, five that I can take all day long and push around wherever I want. But because of the size factor, you know, maybe you don't get the looks that you should or that you wanted or whatever. I mean, does that, does that make, does that give you a chip on your shoulder? I guess is what I'm asking. Like you feel like you always have to prove like, Hey, I deserve to be here because you are a division one athlete. Stephen F. Austin was the first, school to actually reach out to you after you won state and start recruiting you and and you know you ended up going there getting an offer from them and, and you're there now what kind of you know do, does that do you think about that other than whenever I bring it up to you um uh, kind of just because I know like I've talked to a bunch of big league guys people at Oregon people at Baylor people going to the league um that I know and it just it's it's frustrating because they they all say the same thing. They said your size doesn't matter in anything but recruiting. So that's what's upsetting about it is just the fact that even they know that on the field they can get whooped by a six foot dude that they they get whooped by a six seven dude. It's just upsetting that the only time that your size matters is in recruiting. But if you go out on the field and prove it, then no one cares. So you just got to get there. That that was always kind of the goal. Just give me a shot. Let me get out there with these guys and I'll show you why I'm an all state player, state champion. Yeah. So moving into senior year, you did the camps, you did the SMU camp. You, you did a lot of camps that year, the SFA camp. You did the Houston camp. You were getting recruited by um, Houston a little bit. They had reached out, you know, you had interest from, from several different schools. Um, you end up committing to a D2 school, Mississippi College, um, because, if, you know, you, you like what they had to say. You were going to go in and play right away. And then you end up getting the call from SFA and you you end up committing there and going there. So going into that, that uh, senior season, what was the mindset like knowing, hey, worst, you know, not worst case, but. I know I'm going to be playing football somewhere after this season, right? You went in a little banged up because you, you know, you did a lot of camps that summer. You put on a lot of weight to get swole for, for the camps and look as big as possible. So you kind of went in banged up a little bit anyway. What was it like for that senior season um, going through there? You know, what were the emotions like? Um, and how was that last year? It was just, uh, it was, it was mainly because we had come back off a state win um a state win and it was more like we had a lot of pressure like oh go back to state like you can go back to state you got a good team and we did we had an extremely good team but we ended up being extremely injured we went and lost to Brock in the second third round I want to say third round 75 to 20 I think and at that point like yeah we had we had four four guys out but at a 3A school with all 2A guys, you got to think, yeah, we have four guys out, but that's technically eight starters. You got four offensive starters and four defensive starters out. We had Colt Lindsey was hurt. Um, Maddox, my little brother, who was our center, he was hurt. Um, Blaine Palmer, our safety punter, kicker, and receiver, he was out. Sergio Hernandez, our backup running back and starting outside linebacker, he was hurt. Um, I was banged up. Gage was banged up. Tate had a shoulder injury he was playing through. Xavier had a foot injury he was playing through. I mean, David Rodriguez, our, our linebacker, he he ended up tearing his other ACL. So it was just a lot of a lot of injuries going through that season. We we kind of knew come the Brock game, like we're gonna go out there 
we win that we win, but we're down so many people. Like it's it's gonna be hard. Where it's gonna be a rough. It's gonna be rough playing through the season with because a lot of these injury injuries happened early in the season. I think the only one that didn't happen early in the season was Blaine Palmer, and that happened the, the very first round of playoffs. So it's just a lot of pressure, and but I was just trying to do it for the guys who weren't going to get another game, who weren't going to get to play football. Uh, you just got to try your hardest every game. So after that, you you pretty much took off and went. Like you, you had to be down there at the beginning of the summer. What was it like when you got there? Um, it was kind of a reality shock, not really a reality shock, just going from being the top dog to the, to the lowest class. Like, uh, you go from being, being the best on the field to being the same as everyone else. You get there, you have the recruiting class I was in, they were all six, three and up. Um, I came in all the dudes there, they're strong, they're fast. And so it's just, you at the you're you're at the bottom and it's just something you got to get reused to and and make friends and get connections what are you know what's the difference in the workouts between what you're doing up there versus you know what you're what's expected of you in in high school the meetings that sort of thing you had a lot of that going on yeah uh it was it's more like the the expectation is basically more i mean they're expecting you you to know what you're doing, expecting you that they're not gonna they're not gonna wait on you. They're not gonna do this. They're gonna you you have times when you're supposed to do stuff. You're expected to be there on time, uh, early, and then if you're not, then you know that's 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 on you. That's on no one else but you. You're not gonna have. I mean, you'll have a coach text you or call you, but you're not gonna have anyone just coming in being at your side like they would in high school. Um, like with the workout, so tell you the workout. You're expected to do the workout and complete it. He's not going to sit down, cover your, over your shoulder and watch you and make sure you're doing it. So you guys are, you know, you'll go back in, a, in about a week and y'all will start practice. A lot of the teams are already up there because you're a red shirt. Um, they're getting ready for game zero. What are you expecting of yourself going back up there, you know, to, to earn your spot? You know, uh, so we had 136 guys. Um, NCAA only allows 110 to be on the fall camp roster. So I think 26 of us freshmen got sent home. Uh, they kept most of the scholarship guys. I think only 10 freshmen made it, I want to say, something like that. And they were mainly DBs and the receiving core, what we were low on. And, you know, my my expectation for myself going back is – just go out there and prove why I deserve to be there and try and earn, try and earn a travel spot by the end of the year. I think that's a good goal to have. Um, so I guess the last question would be, what would you say it takes to be a D one football player? I mean, what kind of mindset, what kind of training, you know, what do you, you know, what, what does it look like for you? How much effort, how much time do you put into this? Uh, it's, it's really like a full-time job. You just got to be prepared to mentally, mentally and physically be ready. Um, you, you can't slack off every rep that you take. It's got to be the hardest rep that you give. So you got to go out there and compete, compete every day, even through high school. You got to earn, earn, earn your stripes in high school and prove why you deserve to even be looked at. All right. Good deal. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me, Gatlin. Um, we'll be putting this out on our YouTube channel. We'll be out on, you know, probably some clips on TikTok. Let your friends know. Share it around. Any coaches you want to tag. If you know any other guys, you know, that are that are on their way, you know, juniors or seniors right now, they're being recruited, you know, by D1, D2 school or anybody that's in D1 that wants to tell their story, hook them up with, him, uh, with me, send them my way, and we'll see what we can do about talking to them. I appreciate your time. Have a good one and good luck this season. Thank you, sir. See you later.